Fifty Shades of Grey seemed to take the culture by storm in the mid-2010s. It was the book that famously started as a piece of Twilight fanfiction, became a self-published erotic romance, and then quickly rose to infamy as a worldwide bestseller, much to the astonishment of literary commentators. It's been criticized for its explicit content, mocked for its clunky prose, attacked for its portrayal of BDSM and sexual consent. But in spite of everything, its popularity and influence have proved to be enormous, culminating in a 2015 movie adaptation that actually broke box office records. Whatever you may think of the books or the movies, the series has left an indelible mark on the recent history of popular culture. The fervor stirred by the production of the film, which began almost right as the book's momentum was reaching its peak, inspired some unexpected fascination and creative interest from many respected artists. Chief among them was mercurial indie filmmaker and part-time studio contractor Gus Van and Sant, who went so far as to shoot his own uncommissioned test footage in an apparent effort to land the project's high-profile directing gig. Here's the story. Following an intense bidding war, author E. L. James sold the movie rights to Fifty Shades of Grey in 2012, for the staggering sum of about five million dollars. During the year-long development process, the project attracted vocal interest from surprising figures, like American Psycho author Brett Easton Ellis, who tweeted that he would offer his services as screenwriter, which led to a minor online skirmish after Ellis was passed over for the job. Rumors, meetings, and negotiations over who would direct the film ran and rampant for months. Angelina Jolie was allegedly considered, though only briefly, if at all, as were Steven Soderbergh, Patty Jenkins, Bennett Miller, and Bill Condon. Joe Wright was reportedly close to securing the position at one point, but no deal ever came through. Before director Sam Taylor Johnson was hired around June 2013, the filmmaker that appeared most eager to land the gig was Gus Van Sant, the experimental indie auteur responsible for an astonishingly diverse assortment of movies, some brilliant, some exceedingly strange. The list includes art house hits like Drugstore Cowboy and My Own Private Idaho, infamous flops like Even Cowgirls Get the Blues and The Psycho Remake, minimalist exercises like Jerry and Last Days, and even occasional forays into the mainstream with award-winning films like Goodwill Hunting and Milk. Van Sant is the kind of director who doesn't seem to like making the same movie twice, choosing to constantly challenge himself with different material, different production styles, sometimes even completely different aesthetic approaches. His work is personal and distinctive, but his chameleon-like style makes it especially tough to pin down. He's one of those great filmmakers who appears to express himself best when he's shaping his voice to fit whatever is required of the story he happens to be telling. Van Sant's involvement with Fifty Shades, according to an interview the director gave on author Brett Easton Ellis's podcast, no less, began about the time he was delivering the film Promised Land to focus features. Features, right as the studio was finalizing the deal to secure the screen rights to James's books. Unfamiliar with the series, Van Sant claims he got a brief explanation from actor Matt Damon, and was immediately interested, despite never having read the novels. He had at least one informal meeting with the CEO of Focus about directing the film, and not long after went off to start shooting his own test footage. In April 2013, it was revealed that Van Sant had filmed a version of the first sex scene between main characters characters Anastasia Steele and Christian Grey. No articles appear to have revealed the identity of the actress who played Steele for the test, but actor Alex Pettifer of Magic Mike fame was confirmed to have been Van Sant's selection for Grey. The test footage doesn't appear to have ever leaked online, so there's little to no information on what Van Sant's visual approach to the material would have been, at least not that I've been able to uncover. The only hints come from Van Sant himself, again speaking on Ellis's podcast. When asked what drew him to the project, Van Sant admitted that it was partially financial, knowing the film would be a major release, but states frankly that his primary interest was in the project's sexual explicitness. Apparently, the director was tantalized about the possibility of making a mainstream film where the goal was to emphasize sex, normally a subject studio movies, for the most part, worked hard to avoid. There seems to have been an ambition, in Van Sant's mind at least, to do something much more subversive 
and boundary pushing than what eventually found its way on screen in 2015. Van Sant's interpretation likely didn't cause any studio enthusiasm, because he doesn't appear to have ever been involved with any of the official negotiations. The reaction to the Fifty Shades adaptation that did reach theaters was fairly predictable, a negative critical response followed by massive box office returns. Taylor Johnson, originally a visual artist with only one previous film to her name, became a major director, and Fifty Shades solidified a place in the record books as one of the highest grossing films ever by a female director, making it, for better or worse, and in its own way, a significant piece of Hollywood movie-making history. 